polynomial division. And let's start with a little warm up. You guys pause the video here, see if you can divide these two polynomials. All right, welcome back. X divides evenly into X squared and into 4X, giving us X plus 4. Kind of just like dividing out a GCF. Um, on the second one, X divides evenly into 3X to the fourth. It divides evenly into 4X to the third. And it divides evenly into negative X squared, giving us 3X to the third plus 4X squared minus X. All right, let's look at a different format. So let's look if we're asked to divide the polynomial. Put your answer in the form p of x, where k over x, where p is a polynomial, and k is an integer. Well, the format looks weird. It looks different than what we're used to seeing division as. But let's look and see how this works. So x divides evenly into 4x squared. Uh, 4x squared divided by x gives us 4x, but x does not divide evenly into negative 9. Well, to put it in that format, I can just leave my answer as a fraction, which is just really leaving it as future division. So 4x squared divided by x is 4x. Then I have this negative 9, so subtract 9 over x. So it kind of puts this division off to later. So if at a later point we found out what x was, we could put it in, we could multiply it by 4, we could put in and do 9 divided by and whatever our number is for x. So it kind of puts it off as future division. Let's look at another one of those. Let's say we have 8x squared plus 7 over x. 8x squared divided by x just gives us 8x and 7 over x for our remainder or our future division. All right, you guys try this one on your own. Pause the video here. All right, welcome back. So if we are dividing this one, the first two terms divide evenly. And the last term is where we have this k over x form. So we get 7x squared plus x plus 3 over x. Okay, the next type of division we're going to look at with polynomials has to do with factoring. And we can factor and cancel because canceling common factors is a kind of division. So if I look at this problem 4y plus 2, if I'm looking to factor... I can pull out a GCF of 2, and 6y plus 3, I could pull out a GCF of 3. So then I'm just looking to cancel any common factors. Well, I have 2y plus 1 as a common factor. I can cancel those out, and that would reduce to 2 thirds. Now, what would the value of y be that would make the denominator 0? Well, dividing by 0 is... Uh, undefined in math, and it's very bad for our problems, so it's not unusual for us to say, what would mess this problem up by making y zero? Well, I can set up a little equation. I can take my factored form with my variable 2y plus 1. I can make a little equation, set that up equal to zero. I could subtract 1 from each side, divide both sides by 2, and I come up with the idea that y should not equal negative 1 half, because if y were equal to negative 1 half, it would make the whole problem dividing by zero and therefore undefined. So we have what's called a restriction that y cannot be negative one half since it will make the denominator zero and divided by zero is undefined. Now we can also divide polynomials with long division like we did in elementary school and the method is just very similar and the great thing about long division is it doesn't require any kind of factoring. So those of you guys that struggle with factoring, uh, long division is a great way to divide that you don't have to do any factoring. So what does that look like? Well, let's compare two problems. Um, so if the divisor has more than one term perform long division, you do the same steps with polynomial division as with integers. So let's do two problems, one with integers you know how to do, and one with polynomials and see if we can find out what's the same and what's different as what we already know about doing long division and applying that to polynomials. So on the left side, I would start with what times 32 goes into 6? Nothing. What times 32 goes into 69? We go in there two times. Over on the right side with the polynomial, I'm going to ask myself what times x would be x squared? And my answer is going to be x. 
So I'm going to put 2 above the 9. And this x, I'm going to put above the x's so that the x terms will line up. 2 times 32 gives us 64. x times x is x squared. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. Then I'm going to subtract my 64. Well, when I subtract polynomials, I prefer to add the inverse. So to add the inverse, when I do subtraction, I'm going to switch the signs. So I'll make this minus x squared and make this plus 3x. So 69 minus 64 is 5. Over here, the x squares cancel out, and 8x plus 3x is 11x. Then I'm going to bring down the 8 on this side. I'm going to bring down the minus 5 on this side. Then what times 32 is 58? Well, it only goes in there one time. And then what times x would give me 11x? Well, that would be positive 11. So I'm going to put this side. I put 1. Over here, I put plus 11. 1 times 32 is 32. Over here, 11 times x is 11x, and 11 times negative 3 is negative 33. Then, to subtract, I'm going to subtract here, over here with polynomials. To subtract, I prefer to add the opposite. So I'm going to switch the signs. And over here, I subtract, and then adding the opposite, I get 28 as a remainder. Over here, I get 26 as a remainder. And with polynomials, I can just take this remainder of 28 and put it over the divisor. So I can put 28 over, and since it's positive 28, I'm going to put plus 28 over the number I'm dividing by, over the divisor x minus 3. All right, let's look at one with just the polynomial, because we've seen the relationship with long division with integers. And let's look at it here. So I would start with what times x is x squared? That would be x. And the most common mistake people make is they forget to multiply the x times the 1. They know to do x times x to get x squared, but you can't forget to do x times 1 to get x. And then I line up my terms. To subtract, I'm going to add the opposite, so I'm going to flip the signs. My x squared terms cancel out. 3x plus a negative x is 2x, bring down the 2. Then what times x is 2x? Positive 2. Positive 2 times x is 2x. 2 times 1 is 2. Switch my signs and add, and I get no remainder. So that one came out evenly. Awesome. So what could uh, make this problem more difficult or more challenging with the, using division with polynomials? Um, you need to make sure you have place values. So let's talk about place value. So every number in the divisor needs to have a place value holder starting at the highest degree and including a coefficient. So just like when we have 101 has a zero in the tens place to indicate that there are no tens place, we can't just write 1, 1. It would look like 11. We have to have a zero for the placeholder. If I have x to the fourth plus 5x, I'm going to need to have an x term to the third power and an x term to the second power. So I'm going to add in this plus 0x to the third because multiplying by 0 is still 0, so I'm not changing the value of the polynomial. I can put in a 0x squared for a placeholder for the x squared so that if I have a degree of 4, then I have 3, then 2, then 1, and then a constant. So let's look and see what does that look like in a problem. That would look like if I have 7b plus 4b to the third, to put that into having placeholders, I would have to have a 0b squared and have to have a plus 0 at the end. Then I could go ahead and divide it. I can do what times 2b is 4b to the third. It's 2b squared. 2b squared times 2b. 2b squared times negative b. Get negative 2b squared. Switch my signs. Add. Bring down the 7b. What times 2b is 2b squared? Positive b. And notice how all my b squared terms are lining up, all my b terms are lining up, so all my place values are nice and pretty. b times 2b, 2b squared. Switch my signs, add, bring down the 0. What times 2b is 8b? Positive 4. And when I switch signs and add, I end up with a remainder on this. I just take the remainder and put it over 4 plus 2b. All right, you guys try this one on your own.
All right, welcome back. I'm running close on time here, so I'm just going to put up the answer real quick on this one. Should have gotten 2y plus 9 with a remainder of 16. Put that 16 over y minus 3. Have a great day. O-U-T spells out.